Welcome back to another video. You may notice that my backdrop is more interesting than normal and that is because I have made a very big sketch and these are the remnants of that sketch behind me. So I'm going to show you how I made it and yeah, just talk you through the process and then what I did with it after. So I'd been feeling a little bit overworked, so much admin in my life and I just wanted to create. So I went to Devon to see my parents for Easter and I decided to take a huge roll of paper with me. So I bought this roll of paper when I was at university, probably back in 2013 or 2014. So I'd had this roll of paper in the attic for 10 years. And it's just, um, I think it's cartridge paper, it's not very thick. But I just thought I'll take it with me, take it outside and do a sketch. Um, and normally I work really small, so I've been working in sketchbooks as small as this. So this is quite a change, working on a huge sheet of paper. So, yeah, I took it up first thing in the morning, up the hill, and rolled it out. So I think the bit I worked on was about one metre and a half by three to four metres long, something like that. So it was huge, and I didn't really know where to start. But yeah, I just kind of went for it. I used my brush shade pigments that I've been using a lot recently. I kind of used them like I would watercolour. I needed to use so much brush -o in order to cover a small area of the paper because it was just such a big painting. Um, so I was like mixing up huge amounts compared to what I normally use and it still wasn't going very far on the paper. And the paper got so wet by the end of it. But anyway, yes, so I was just looking out of the view. So this view, is um, a view that I've seen my whole life. I think it's beautiful. I love the patchwork fields. And Sam, my husband, took over the filming part because I was feeling so fatigued by um, like the cycle of film, edit, and then put the work out there into the world. And it was just nice to take a step back and just do the making. And he just did all the filming for me, which was such a luxury. I started off just kind of doing a wash of colour just to try and get rid of all the whiteness of the paper which can be really intimidating um, and then I, I started adding in details later on. It was just a really interesting process. It was so different to painting in a smaller sketchbook because I noticed I wasn't just painting with my hands, I was using my whole body to paint. and. Um, the next day, actually for the next three days, I was in so much pain in my legs because I guess I'd been stretching in ways I don't normally. So yeah, I had a lot of um, muscle pain the next few days, but I guess that shows how physical it was. So yeah, it was just really lovely. It was quite tricky. I, I was mixing colours and then just putting them straight on the paper so often the colours weren't what I thought because with brush -o pigments it's kind of a mixture of different pigments you don't quite know what it's going to be until you add water and lay it over the surface so that was a bit confusing I was surprised that I wasn't actually too phased working on such a big artwork I'm so used to working on tiny wood blocks or small sketches you would have thought I'd be a bit nervous about working on such a big scale, but actually, I think because it was so different to what I normally do, it just was really liberating and there wasn't any pressure. If I did a really bad painting, I could be like, well, this isn't what I normally do, I'm just experimenting. Like, it was so far removed from what I normally do. It just felt really freeing. It was so lovely being surrounded by bird song. There were so many different birds singing and the wind blowing and the sun. And it was just, I just wish I could start every day like this. I feel like every day would be a good day if I could start it like this. If I were to do this again, and I really would like to, I'd definitely want a thicker brush because the brush that I used, it was the biggest one I own, but it is nowhere near big enough for this task. And it was really hard to cover places like the sky where I just needed a big wash of colour and it felt like it was taking forever to do that. When it came to adding the details, I was slightly more intimidated because, yeah, it just felt like I was trying to match up the wash that I'd done 
with the landscape and trying to work out what goes where. It really did challenge me, that part of the process. I really love the colour green, but I find it hard to mix a really nice green. I often add a lot of yellow ochre into my colours that I mix, and that isn't a yellow ochre in this set of brush -o. I don't know if brush do a yellow ochre, I need to look it up. But yeah, it was quite challenging getting like a warmer green, and as I said, it's really hard to mix brush -o when you don't have something to test the colours out on. Sam did such a good job with the filming doing all the panning shots. I don't really know what he'd captured because obviously I was concentrating on the painting. But looking at it now, I'm like, wow, he clearly needs to come and film everything with me. He won't, but it was nice. It was nice for a day just to have that taken off my hands. We'd been up on the hill for a couple of hours and my mum appeared with a cup of tea and some hot cross buns, which was so needed because I was getting really hungry at this point. So we stopped for a really quick break before getting back to work. I knew that it was going to start raining later in the morning so I didn't have loads of time so I was having to work quite quickly and I was just kind of getting a feel for the shapes rather than I wasn't adding in every branch that I could see on trees and things. It was kind of how I felt like where I kind of my arms wanted to go I wasn't thinking too much to be honest I was just going for it it was really liberating and then we started to see these grey clouds coming at us it was like misty you could tell it was going to be so wet and so I was really towards the end so quickly adding in the foreground like the grasses in the foreground and I was kind of adding whatever colour I could and it was all felt like it was going a bit wrong but I needed to finish it because um yeah if it did rain the grass was going to be so wet it's not like I could go back up there in an hour and carry on. Working so close up to the artwork I wasn't really sure how it was looking but it's really cool to see it from the sky like this to get the whole artwork in one shot and Sam was saying it looks like my little sketch is just on a big scale like when you zoom out with the drone it just looks like one of the sketches in my sketchbook and I find it really interesting that I was able to keep my normal sketching style while working on such a big scale. So yeah, I folded the paper in half and then half again. I don't think we got footage of this because it was just absolute chaos. <laughs> and then I ran down the hill and took it into my parents' house um, and it took up the whole of the dining room and I just laid it out on the floor. And some of the ink got a bit smudged. Some of the sky is a little bit green now because I had to fold it and um, it got a bit creased. And there's droplets of water where you can see where the rain hit the ink. But yeah, it was all part of the process, that's the thing of working outside. You kind of have to cope with the elements that come at you. So of course, it was just such a big painting that it wasn't very practical, especially as the paper it's on is quite thin. I thought, first of all, has anyone got a wall this big? Does anyone want this? Because I'm not going to roll it up and keep it in my studio for another 10 years because there's no point to that. Um, the main part of this for me was about the process just feeling free after feeling quite constricted by how I was doing things and how everything just felt really monotonous and it felt like it's a bit of freedom for me to create a piece this big, something so different from what I normally do. I would normally work so small. So anyway, I thought, well, I'm going to cut it up because then I can have it in more usable pieces. If anyone wants a bit of it, they can have a bit of it. So I cut strips of paper so I could kind of um, mask off areas and create like an aperture where I could see what bit of the composition was going to work. And I decided if I was going to cut it up, the bits that were usable were going to need sky. I think the blue is really important in this piece. So I think I decided there were four vertical compositions that I could cut that would make nice artworks. I actually discarded the fourth in the end, I think, because I just wasn't as happy with it. So the three that I chose are behind me here, but um, yeah, they've been cut down since. So I cut them into strips in Devon, brought them back, and then I've cut them into uh, like a poster size because I thought if anyone wants these, so this, these are going to be sold um, 
cheaply because they're on quite thin paper, it's an experiment and it's so different from my normal work, they just feel so separate from that. And I thought, well, and they need to be like a standard size and someone's not going to want to pay X amount for the artwork and a lot more for the frame. So, um, or they might not want to. As an ex-picture framer myself, I know that picture framing can feel really expensive, but honestly, it's such a skill to picture frame. But anyway, I didn't want, you know, a, to sell random sizes to people. So these three are poster sizes, as close as I could get by cutting them. I used my um, mount cutter. Um, but it, it was like just to the, it was as big as the mount cutter could cut and um, yeah, it was hard to get it exactly straight, but I think they're as straight as I could get them. So yeah, there's those three there. Now, I was left with lots of offcuts and what I normally do with offcuts is I collage. So that's what I've been doing. So for the past week, I've been stealing moments here and there between print release prep. My print release is today. Um, for you, it will have been a few days ago, but for me, it's today. Um, so I haven't had much time, but when I have had time, like two days ago until about half 12 at night, I was collaging. And, you know, I'd finished with my work for the day and I thought I really want to collage. These are the collages that I've made so far. Yeah, they're really different to what you've seen before, probably. I guess because they're paintings turned into collages, not prints. and. There's nothing intricate about these, whereas with my wood engravings, like there's so many tiny details. But um, yes, yeah, so there's this one. Um, this is one of the first ones I made. So the blue from the sky really lends itself to water as well as sky. So some of the collages have water in. In fact, actually most do. Um, I really like the shapes of this one. I think so far this might be my favourite. I love the shadow. So this is just two parts of the painting put together, but I feel like because there's so much going on in the brush strokes, it looks really detailed. When I bought the painting inside, I actually added a little bit more to the foreground of the painting. These lines here I added after because it just felt a bit unfinished, but I actually ended up cutting most of them off, like the bottom of the um, painting is kind of cut off so anyway a lot of it's in the collages um, and there's pinks in there as well because I did feel like the painting was lacking any warmth in colour um, so that's something to think about in the future so there's this one and then this one so that's what I've done so far I look at these and these collages like they make me really happy um, it's just I feel like sometimes in an artist's career like there's a moment that changes things and I feel like this could be that for me but I don't quite know why yet or where I'm gonna go but um yeah they feel really significant already and like I already know I don't want to sell them although I will because I'm an artist but I also run a business and if I kept all the pieces I liked you know it wouldn't be a very good business. But anyway, so yeah, I'm gonna uh, make a few more collages this morning just to relax a little bit before print release chaos. I'm, I'm like quite nervous about it. So collaging is such a nice activity to just think color, composition, and not worry about everything that could go wrong this afternoon. So I've got um, a lot of scrap material left because I mean, the painting was just so big. Um, so there's loads more collages I can make. It's not going to be very easy to work with because it's so rolled up. And um, like some of the textures don't inspire me as much as others, so I won't use all of it. Just sections like that I find really interesting. Like there's little bits where I'm like that has really nice colour and texture and contrast. I saw a message on Instagram and I think I lost it amongst my requests, but um, someone asked me what scissors I use because these is really chunky ones um, so yeah it's prestige uh, they're just kitchen scissors that I had at my parents house when I was a child and I took them when I moved out because they're just my favorite scissors so anyway yeah, I'm just gonna get cutting and um, see what other collages I can come up with So I cut out all the bits I wanted to collage with and discarded the rest just so I could see what I had to work with. And then I've made a few more collages. 
I've stuck these collages on a thicker card um, so they're not so flimsy. It's been really nice creating some more collages. I love that there's so many different possibilities, combinations that I can create from these scraps. My hands are absolutely covered in the brush o powder where I've been like um, collaging and there's still bits of powder on the surface. So um, yeah, slightly messy job. I've made a few more collages. I'm going to keep going. I've got to stop soon because I need to prep my website for the print release. But this has been a nice distraction for me. So as a thank you for making it this far into the video, for watching my videos, um, I am putting all the collages I've made and the three pieces behind me on my shop. Uh, there's a link in the description of this video um, and I'm putting them on for like a reduced price just because well the paper is um, it's not very really thick so for the pieces behind me I feel like they could do with being um, dry mounted like stuck to something a bit thicker but anyway I'm gonna send them rolled up if they sell so I can't do that here but yeah they, it's just not like the best paper I'd say because it was just an experiment um, so anyway, so those three are going to be on my shop as well as um, all the collages that I made. With the collages, they seem to have a tendency to want to curl up a bit, I think, because it was paper that was rolled up for so long. So yeah, just be aware of that they'll probably need to be wrestled into frames. I might put um, a card pack on as well. That might happen a bit later. Um, yeah, because I need to photograph and then order the cards, they need to arrive. Check the shop to see if there's a card pack on there, but I'm putting them in a section of the shop where you just wouldn't know they were there unless you click the link. So if you're watching this video, um, then you know, but I'm not going to announce it anywhere else. Just because there's, it's so different to what I normally do, it wouldn't make sense to send out to my newsletter subscribers, I don't think. And it's just, I've just, I will have just done a print release. These are going to be sold unmounted. It's just a bit fun um, and just to say thank you for watching my channel. So yeah, they should be live on my shop if you're watching this. Um, unless they've sold and you're watching this in the future. I don't know if they'll sell because I don't know if anyone's interested because it's so different to um, what I normally do. But yeah, it was, it's been really fun. I feel like starting a YouTube channel has kind of given me permission to do things like this, to experiment to think what would be a fun video, what would be something really fun to do and it's, yeah, the permission to experiment and explore new things has been the best thing I think about making these videos and um, yeah I just want to say thank you for supporting me, I really I really do appreciate you taking the time to watch, watch me create. So anyway I'm going to keep collaging for a little bit longer but um, then that I've got a load of admin to do. I hope you found this interesting. Next week, I think it's going to be next week, there'll be a video about making paper. So that should be good. And yeah, thanks for watching.